Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today we are taking a look at a new bite-sized horror game from the Haunted PS1 collection. I think this is called Bright Blight Hollow. Blight Hollow. I forget the name of this game. <laughs> uh, I am not sure what this is about. I'm going in blind. It ha well, it it has something to do with cats and finding cheddar. I don't know if that's some kind of analogy for drugs, but we shall see. So, anyway, without further ado, let's see what this game has to offer. It's the middle of the it's the middle of no light, and you've just been rudely awakened by your landlord demanding an extortionate amount of rent. Oh, it's money. You don't have the cheddar to cover it, so you've gone to the nearby neighborhood in search of odd jobs to scrounge up crumbs. Oh. Wow, what a, uh, what a look. That's grass. Oh, I like the fireflies. That's pretty cool. What is that? What is that? Okay. Hey, what do we got here? The hefty mouse behind the bar looks, looks you up and down, their paw rapidly spinning a bolt of cloth inside a thimble. Barky. Hmm, hey there. Haven't seen you around here before. Surely you didn't just wander in from the trail. I'd be fairly impressed. Not many a mouse is able to avoid those roving packs of feral beasts. Uh oh. Best to keep a, best to keep to the cordoned off zones where we know the fat cats are able to ensure our safety. Gods no. How do you know it's dangerous? I've been told as much, and I don't go around questioning an entity as all knowing as fat cats. Look, is there something you need? Uh, got any crumbs? Ah, just what I like to hear. A mouse motivated to work. I mean, assuming you are looking to work for those crumbs. Well, we have a bit of a roach problem in the cellar. They're quite huge. Would probably take a skilled swords mouse, swords mouse to fell one. So, that rules you out. But, I got something more your speed. A letter that needs to be delivered. Are you familiar with Nine Lives? What's that? Really? It's the biggest chain owned by fat cats. You've definitely seen one at some point. They're everywhere. At any rate, there's one just further down the path here. That's where you're going. Take this letter and give it to the cashier. You were given a mysterious letter. They'll be the ones to pay you. Don't listen to any pleas they come up with. They're a rampant liar. Uh, what'd they do? Nothing. Deliver the letter and don't open it. Trust me, just hand that over and you'll get something nice in return. Let me know when it's taken care of. Stay safe out there. Oh, here we go. We got someone else. Barfly. Hey there. You're that new mouse around here, right? The one that does whisker deliveries? <laughs> whisker. I've seen you out there now and then doing deliveries just like me. Is that your side gig? Not quite. Oh, my friend, there's no shame in it. I'm a cog, just like you. I know your pain all too well. We're comrades out there. The everlasting chase for Chetta. It's so fruitless. I could use some help. What's up? I'm being evicted. No shit. Me too. Let's be friends. <laughs> We're already co-workers. I hate that, though. Whisker is terrible. This is another dumb fat cat's initiative cooked up to follow Humi trends. It pays the hills. The bills, not the hills. Not enough, apparently. Not like you have much of a choice, anyway. Hardly any jobs out here, much less anything hiring. Damned if you do, damned if damned more if you don't. It's nice not having to work at one of those stupid shops like Nine Lives, but... I don't know how good that really is. All I do day in and day out is sprint up and down the trail, handing rather... Handing... Handing richer mice food they can afford for scraps of crumbs off the top. I don't have to stop unless I want it, which is really good. But also, it's not like I have to go out there. No one is making me. And no one cares about me out there. It's lonely. I miss camaraderie. I had a tumble the other week while I was running a delivery. Fell down a hillside. Hillside. Steep. Really messed me up. Bounced off some rocks on the way down. Had a hard time walking, and the doc I saw told me it was going to cost a good hunk of cheddar to fix me up. I didn't really have much stowed away, because I'm barely making crumbs anyway, you know? You can't save on that pittance. Plus, after paying for the checkup, I can barely afford to eat. 
And now I couldn't get going to make more money because my job relies on me being able to run all over the place. Real shit sandwich, let me tell you. I tried to reach out to Whisker and tell him, you know, I was working for you guys while this happened. You know, I pulled myself back up on the trail and hobbled all the way to the end of my delivery still. Maybe they'd help maybe they'd help front some of the costs, make me feel like they valued my work. I appreciated the due diligence in finishing out an order after that. They told me I was the one responsible for me. So now here I am. I got some crumbs for drinks, I slowly limp up and down the trail for a few more crumbs for some more drinks, and I survive. Hick. <laughs> I don't feel like talking much anymore. Alright, good, uh, well written dialogue, I must say. Alright, so I got a delivery! Let's see. A note stuck on the door reads The Shoebox Apartments. Opening soon. Located in the scenic outskirts, the Shoebox offers luxurious living for an affordable price. For only 5,600 Cheddar a cycle, you too can enjoy a roomy six square inches in the hottest new craze Microburrows! Contact us during Big Light to fill out an application. Please note that applications cost half cycles rent. Applications do not guarantee placement within the complex. Fee is non-refundable. Alrighty. Anything back here? Nah. Nine lives, huh? Alrighty. Ooh. It's a convenience store. Okay. They lean lazily on the counter. Obviously young. Obviously extremely bored. Ah, uh, millennial rat. <laughs> They don't seem to notice your approach. You wave your paw a little at them, and they come, too. Local teen. Yeah, I was right! <laughs> oh, um, hi. Are you buying anything? Are you buying something? What's this place? A letter for you. They shift nervously, averting their gaze from yours. Uh, what do you mean? You hand them the mysterious letter. Look, I don't have anywhere near enough crumbs. It's the messenger. Sure, sure, but first you, then who? What if they send someone actually threatening to my burrow? I mean, my parents' burrow, but... I mean, I live there too, just not with them, you know? Because they suck. Anyway, I don't think I can afford that. You gotta help me out. How? I'm broke. Well, if you want to keep your word to them, you're gonna have to help, otherwise you're in trouble too. I'd say it's definitely your problem. They don't take kindly to people who can't accomplish what they need. I can't afford that tab, but I have a friend that I think can help. Uh, who? Alright, so you're gonna head out of here, take a left, you should see a small path through the grass. That'll take you to a cliff. Knowing them, there should be an old mouse starting at, staring at nothing out there. I know everything there is to know about this place. They'll know what to do about the barkeep. And I know you've got a lot of questions about all this, so I'm sure they can clue you in on what a mess this place is. Here, this is a note explaining everything. Just hand that over. You were given the hastily scrawled note. I'll close up early and meet you over there when I'm done. We'll talk more about what to do. This is exciting! If you say so. It is. Today might just be the red letter day we've been waiting for if you decide to help my friend. Anyway, I gotta start getting stuff put away here. Go get caught up. Good luck. Alright. So, past the grass, there should be a cliff. Oh. Hey there. Older Mouse. Well, hello there, Squirt. What can I do for you? What are you doing? Who are you? I have a note for you. I have a note for you. Oh. Let me have a look. Oh, that poor youngling. Hmm. I suppose you have a lot of questions, don't you? What's going on here? A farce of monumental proportions, Squirt. The felines have swindled us time and again. But what's happening now is by far the worst swindle that they've ever wrought. What about, the, what about the kid? The squabble between that child and the barkeep is nothing compared to what the cats have their paws in. The barkeep is only the beginning, I assure you. Do you understand how a system of control can wrap its mealy tail around a society of intelligent creatures? For the fat cats, it's a simple matter of disinformation, smoke screens, and silencing any squeaks of dissidents. A concerted effort set to establish complete and utter control of how we perceive reality itself. They've set their paws to creating a hyper-reality in which we find ourselves immersed, a world so doused in the muddied waters of the true and the untrue that the lines between them are inexorably blurred, until we can no longer see the water we swim in. After all, if you can't know what's in our, what's, what is or isn't real, how can you make any meaningful change or fight injustice? How do you ever know there's problems with the system to begin with? 
and those who dare go against the grain find themselves quickly, quickly swatted down by the iron paw of totalitarianism. There's a reason our last attempt to overthrow our feckless leaders is called the Final Rebellion. It's a statement of what reality will be as much as one of what was. Reality will be as much as one of what was. We've lost our chance to turn the tide. What happened? Infiltration, undermining, turning us against one another, creating insurmountable walls between us. An external group to turn a hateful eye upon stops one from focusing on the real internal issues. A dastardly plan to blind us with our own hatred. Hey, this sounds a lot like modern politics. The barkeep was just a mouse who fell, entranced by the siren song of the blame. A thought movement that placed all of the hardships of mousehood squarely on the shoulders of non-mice, excluding the felines, of course. Anger is far easier to harbor than love. The cats knew that and exploited it to its fullest. What are you talking about? What did they do? Tell me, when was the last time you saw a rat? Uh, isn't that a scary headline? Never seen one. There's a reason for that, as there is for all things, one that I'm sure you understand. Originally, this oak stood above all the woods here, a guardian high above the tree line. The fat cats would have those they called lesser beings with cold calculation hang from its branches. The tree of growth, they called it. We shed the weight we shed the weight of their burden upon us as a society to achieve greater heights, or so they have you believe. The barkeep was the grim caretaker of this place, an ancient family home that they had themselves inherited. Eventually the oak turned, in time, into an inn, but they couldn't keep it afloat after the issuance of Cheddar. But, with the advent of the den, no soul wished to venture this far, especially not for a fee. Desperate and low on Cheddar, they, the, they turned the oak over to fat cats when they expressed a keen interest in the location. The rats weren't the only undesirables in the eyes of the felines. One group is rarely enough to bear the brunt of such ire for long. Quickly, the oak became a harbor for all sorts of enemies of the establishment. Any who earned their ire began to quietly disappear. For a while, the mice brought here would simply be adjusted. No one was ever quite the same when they came back. It wasn't until much later we realized that the bastards were making them infertile. Yes. That's why you have to stop them. Excuse me? You're an unknown entity here. I've seen you skulking about, trying not to be noticed. You slip in and out of that burrow like a spirit in the night. Going unnoticed seems to be a skill you've owned well, and it's something that could benefit all of mouse kind tonight. Easily enough, you could slip into the oak, scale it, and topple the feline patriarch that hides up top, silently lording over us. His gaze never his gaze never falters from this place here. The cat in the tower controls it all, without raising a single paw. But, they'd never see it coming. You're so meek, so modest in physical stature, after all. Face it, you're the perfect mouse for the job. They've, they've all taken so much from us, it's time we take it back. We can burn away the blight that has plagued this once great society. Why not that kid? They're too loud, too boisterous, too emotionally charged. They couldn't hold themselves together long enough to make it past the security in that oak. Not like you. I just want to pay my rent. Ha, rent. That's a good one. Who do you think owns all the land around here? The landlord? No, they're just a patsy. They shake you down for your cheta, the go-between for whenever things get, for whenever things turn ugly. The barkeep's windfall from fat cats was more than enough to snatch up the land the felines had no interest in. Your rent won't ever be a worry again if we can take this first step towards a new tomorrow. Fine. That's the spirit. First things first, we're going to need some leverage to get the keys to the Fortress of the Oak. It may not look like much, but it's nigh impregnable. I have an idea. Go back to the tin can bar. The barkeep always scurries off this time of no light to meet with their superiors. Behind the bar on the far side from the entrance, you'll find a false bottom in the last drawer. There you'll find a bargaining chip. Bring it to me and we can set in motion a new dawn for mouse kind. I'll head towards the bar shortly after you. I just need a few more moments first. After all, who knows how many more I'll have like this, where hope springs eternal in a mouse's chest. Best not to deny an old mouse, long and whisker and brittle of bone that much. Remain steadfast, Squirt. Okay. Alright, so where am I going? Oh, hey! Do, do that. Well, I didn't expect you to actually accept that. Sorry, I was eavesdropping. I finished closing the store and you were too, and you two were so loud. At any rate, I think they're sending you after... Well, you'll see. I've glimpsed it before. It's beautiful. What is it? I don't want to spoil the surprise. I should probably get the hell out of here before shit hits the fan. I think you're on the verge of kicking the hornet's nest, and I don't want to be around for it. I'd rather not be collateral damage. So I guess... 
I hope this isn't goodbye. Just a farewell until I see you again in the in the big light. Hopefully we'll both stand a little taller as mice in control of their own fates for the first time in a long time. By the way, I uh, shaved a little off the top of tonight's profits when I was counting the till. I know, I know, you're toppling the, the me me oligarchy. <laughs> but just in case you end up needing to pay your rent somehow, don't die up there. Hey, got some cheddar. Thanks, buddy. All right. Let's go back over here and see what this... I'm a little worried. I don't know why. I probably shouldn't be. Right. Oh, hey, yous. Long time no she. Have you, uh, did you she the barkeep? They, uh, just left. Nope. Oh, uh, okay. Did you think they'd mind me snagging myself a nutter -ger? Another, uh, drink from behind a bar? Well, while you're back there, you decide to bring them up to speed on what you've learned about the oak. You assume they won't remember much of this anyway. Oh, and sure, have how much of a paw the barkeep has in all this, they are wont to believe you regarding the rest of the tale. As you mention the bargaining piece, the barfly's eyes light up. They rush to the other side of the bar, open the drawer, remove the false bottom, and set the object on the counter. The Lord of the Hundreds. A pungent odor fills your nostrils, a scent you've never before experienced. You feel your senses heighten. The barfly seems to sober up almost instantly. One of the few pieces of edible cheese left in this world. Anything else gets pounded into cheddar immediately by the cats. Barkeep's the only one I know of who still has a piece of contraband like this. They showed me it once, when they were a little drunk. I guess it's some kind of family keepsake or something, pawed down through generations of mice. Never really thought much of it until now. I guess your story does check out. Felines wouldn't let something like this slip by them for so long without good reason. You ever wonder what cheese tasted like before we turned it to crumbs? Before we used it to trade material goods and labor, when it was just a simple pleasure we enjoyed with one another? Before subjugation? They trail off into silence, drifting into their thoughts. A strange impulse fills you, snout to tail, their words echo in your mind. Why was it taken from you and your kind? Surely there'd be no harm in just... Let's try some. Oh, really? Yeah? I guess you're already pissing them off, so... Might as well taste what our ancestors used to relish. Hope it aged well. Here. You're given a piece of the Lord of the Hundreds. Eat it. As soon as it hits your tongue, you feel the room begin to shift. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. What's happening? A strange sensation overtakes your form. Your corporeal body detaches from your spirit. A higher existence comes into focus, here, within this moment. Your thoughts drift to currency. What use is it? As this stream of emotions, you feel peace. In this stream of emotions, you feel peace. Your rent no longer looms overhead, demanding your subservience to a greater system that wishes not for your best interests, nor to care for you. The taste still lingers in your mouth, slippery, simply sublime. Eons of cheese eating wash over you, the natural state of things, your heritage. Why have we let them take it? Why was it... What is it blocking you out of the past? It certainly isn't a law of nature. There's more of us than them. We outnumber them a million to one. Why is it that we have yet to converge? To take on the upper hand? Why have we been so scared? They shouldn't take from us any longer. They can't. Not today. Not anymore. They won't. Did you feel that? It's like something woke within me and I don't think it's going back to sleep. You should, uh, take this and get out of here. You're given the Lord of the Hundreds. Take it. I think I need to go lie down. That was, uh, a lot. Good luck up there. I think you might be the only one who can change all this. Mousekind deserves to be free. I don't know why I'm trying to do a Boston accent. I really don't. Alright, well, uh, this is going to be a little bit longer. You know. I kind of want to see where this goes. Oh, hell. <gasps> oh, no. You. You fucking Mickey. I know what you stole from the bar. Who do you think you are? 
You're coming with me, you pissed off the wrong cat. Oh no. Oh man, this is getting dark. Oh man, that was good. Oh, I really enjoyed that. I wish it, uh, well, I guess it kind of had to end. We were already out of time. But that was Until Big Light. That was a nice little story-driven mouse novel. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of talking in it, but I really I really liked the characters. It had really good writing. Um, I really enjoyed the setting. I hope to see more of this. I would like this to uh, maybe be its own, uh, its own maybe three to four hour game. That would be pretty cool. See just how strange and dark and creepy the world of the cats are. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. And you can check this game out on the PS1 demo disc on itch.io. And until the next video, I love you all. Bye-bye.